Why is the Republican led committee still prosecuting an investigation into an attack on an American election? They must have made a decision, Nicole, as crazy as it sounds, that this still resonates with some portion of their base and that it will activate them for the election. Look, there's the reason that um, the FBI initiated the investigation, as Jim Comey explained today in his testimony, uh, is because they had credible um, evidence that there was ongoing interference. They got it from uh, a friendly government. They had to open the investigation. As Jim said today, not doing so would have been an absolute dereliction of duty. And it's really beyond me that they continue to politicize this. I don't get it. Um, I worked in the intelligence community. I ran an agency that was a small part of the IC. I worked on two occasions, as you pointed out, for the FBI, a large part of the IC. There is no dispute in the intelligence community, in the IC, about what happened. And as Jim also pointed out, and I think it's a very, very good point, the Senate Intelligence Committee, in a bipartisan report, made the exact same finding. I mean, so why are they doing this, Nicole? You really ought to ask them because I'm dumbfounded. <laughs> I want to ask you about sort of a crush of new reporting, mainly in the New York Times, that got a hold of two decades of Donald Trump's tax returns. And something Peter Strzok, former FBI um, agent and official, said on this show, he said that looking at those returns, a counterintelligence investigation into Donald Trump would be justified just to understand who has that much financial leverage over him. What say you? Oh, yeah. I mean, look, I had to apply for a security clearance for a number of my jobs, Nicole. I'm sure you had to do that as well when you uh, went to work in the Bush White sure. House. We would not get jobs if we had debt. I can tell you I would not get um, – there's no way uh, anybody would sign off on my security clearance if I had not just $400 million in debt, but if I was taking tens of millions right. of dollars from foreign governments. And by the way, they don't know from whom I borrowed money or to whom I owe it. And so is it a, you know, right. I heard Pete earlier today, he said it was much more of a counterintelligence concern than a financial concern. I think he's right. You know, if I had mm -hmm. to pay back half a billion bucks, it would also be a financial concern. Uh, but at the very least, it's a counterintelligence concern. Uh, and that's why, in addition to disclosing financial information when you hold high office, the norm is to disclose your tax returns so we can see those concerns as well as the potential conflicts of interest. There's a whole bunch of reasons that presidents do this. And in fact, Joe Biden and uh, Kamala Harris released the returns yesterday. That is not the exception. That is the rule. The exception is Donald Trump. You know, Claire McCaskill, I want to bring you in on this because it, it's right. It went so under the radar that Kamala Harris and Joe Biden released their taxes because until Donald Trump, it, it was the norm and they were covered. But the, the actual act of making that disclosure was what every presidential campaign did. I was involved in the process for both the candidates I worked for, John McCain and George W. Bush. But I want to ask you about something Hillary Clinton said. She last night described Donald Trump as a clear and present danger to our national security. And my question is two part. One, do you agree? And two, do you think this this reporting in the Times about just how leveraged and indebted he is, the millions of dollars that have come in from foreign governments, I think it was Turkey and the Philippines and one other and this knowledge that his businesses are really bleeding out financially, does it add to previous concerns about him as a national security threat? Of course it does. And if, if when you add to that, I mean, don't listen to what he says. Listen to what he does. And it is obvious to anyone who's even halfway paying attention that Donald Trump is somehow worried about what Putin thinks of him. He is he will not yeah. confront Putin. I mean, it is I mean, it is still astounding to me that he can get 40 percent in the polls when he refuses to confront Putin on putting a bounty on American soldiers. That flies in the face of the values that I always thought were central to the Republican Party. But that's kind of the Republican Party was all about the military and protecting the military and protecting veterans and protecting, giving the military what it needs to succeed. So it is obvious that he's got something 
with Erdogan and Putin and others, and it is financial, and that makes him a security threat. And we don't know who he, who he owes all this money to. Uh, and I'll tell you why the hearing happened. They were probably teeing off on the eighth hole, and Trump, Trump turned to Lindsay and said, Lindsay, you know, um, you've got to get this done for me. You've got to have this hearing and expose Hillary Clinton, you know, and all that garbage he talks all the time. And Lindsay said, yes, sir, I'm on it. You know, Matt Miller, again, I spend a lot of my free time looking for silver linings. I guess one of them is that Lindsay is now behind in the polls for all of his subservience on the golf course to Donald Trump. But pick up on on both Claire's points and um, on Chuck's being confounded, because I, I remain confounded, too. I mean, I think Claire offers the most plausible explanation of what Jim Comey was doing testifying again today about the origins of the Russia investigation. But I, I thought we had three independent investigations into that investigation and everyone found that it was properly predicated. Why do you think this is viewed as politically beneficial to Donald Trump 35 days before Election Day? I think it's pretty simple. I think it's because the Republicans all live in this Fox News bu bubble that warps their sense of reality. And, you know, there are there there are we yeah. talk a lot about the advantages, the political advantages they have of living inside this Fox bubble. Sometimes it means that there is usually a floor for their political <laughs> support. You saw that during impeachment, where no matter what evidence came out, it didn't really matter because Republicans lived in an alternative reality where they weren't going to move. But there's also a ceiling that it creates. And you see this in, 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 in places like this hearing today. You see it in the president's answer last night where he started you know, talking about these conspiracy theories that I think would be incomprehensible to, to 90 percent of the people watching. I think most people had no idea what yes. he's talking about. And most people who watch the hearing that today have no idea what Lindsey Graham and the other Republicans were talking about. And so I think if you're a natural yeah. voter, you look at Republicans relitigating what's ancient history to them and wonder why they're not doing more to manage and address current history. I think this is one of those examples where, you know, this thought, this, this sort of distorted reality, um, you know, com it collides with the actual reality in a way that is to their political detriment. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.